are seizures. The seizures basically happen uh, for folks who have had brain injuries because there's a disturbance in the brain, scarring or the injury itself, that can cause misfiring uh, or abnormal electrical activity in the brain so the impulse doesn't get to where it needs to go. The seizures range in severity, so they may be very mild, maybe not even noticeable, to pretty severe. Uh, and the mild seizures may only be a change in behavior or um, you know, a blank stare, maybe smacking their lips. Um, and then the symptoms may progress a bit more moderate or severe where they, they tend to have muscle spasms or shakiness. They may uh, get very, very stiff. They may lose consciousness. They may fall down. Um, and then you, what you see on TV with the, the grand shaking. But that doesn't always happen. The worse the injury, the more likely you are to have a seizure. So it's estimated that about 65% of people who've had a, a penetrating brain injury, such as a gunshot wound, then go on to have seizures. Uh, whereas only like 20% of people who have had uh, bleeding between their brain and the skull have seizures. Uh, is also kind of depending on when the seizures first occur. So there's the early post-traumatic seizure, which occurs within a week of the injury. So if you've had a seizure in that first seven-day period, you're less likely to continue having more seizures. However, with a late post-traumatic seizure, uh, if you had a seizure after the seven days, then you're more likely to continue to have seizures. So if you or your loved one do suffer from seizures caused by a brain injury, there are other options for you. There are post-acute rehab facilities that can help you learn how to live with your seizures and your brain injury.